Hey guys, it's Ryan. Let's um, pick up where we left off, and this is actually going to be my favorite part of the talk, because now that we talked about what a tooth is made out of, how a tooth responds to acid, now we can talk about like the relevant stuff, um, how this all plays into our um, daily lives, essentially, and how we can um, respond as dentists or as patients to uh, what we know now about cavity formation. Whoops, all right. So the original caries theory from the 1960s had three pre prerequisites for caries. And they said the tooth, the diet, and the plaque were the three things. Well, I mean, obviously the tooth is necessary. So I kind of modified this and broke it down into three categories um, because I think this is this big three is a little bit more useful to think about. So, the caries process is multifactorial and requires these factors in order to occur. So we have fermentable, uh, so we need fermentable carbohydrates or sugar. We need cariogenic bacteria, sometimes referred to as the bugs, and we need a dental biofilm or plaque. So we need these bacteria to arrange a certain way on the tooth, and this will cause uh, caries, or um, more commonly, uh, colloquially referred to as cavities, and caries in Latin uh, is just Latin for decay, so that kind of makes sense. Um, and then also, important to know is this is a time-dependent process, so we need a certain amount of time, uh, often almost a couple years, to get from a perfectly healthy tooth for and to get to a cavitated lesion in a tooth. So dental caries is an irreversible microbial disease uh, with demineralization of the inorganic portion of the tooth and destruction of the organic portion. So now people have tried to eliminate a component from this equation, theoretically stopping cavities from forming. So this is pretty cool. Um, so first, Let's look at cariogenic bacteria, which just basically means that these are bacteria that are able to form caries. They're able to contribute to caries in the mouth. The main ones are Streptococcus mutans and Lactobacillus, probably the two main players, Streptococcus mutans being the most, the biggest player, because it's literally built for causing cavities. This thing is ruthless. Um, it's unique in that it has an enzyme called uh, GTF or uh, glucosyl transferase that converts sucrose into a polymer called glucan that is incredibly sticky and allows plaque or biofilm to form. It's essentially the glue that holds plaque together and biofilm is a scientific term. It's bio meaning organic film referring to the thin uh, film structure and this is where sugar and bacteria can live in harmony stuck to a tooth. Well that's just great right? Um, and then lactobacillus is like streptococcus mutans it is um, acidogenic uh, so it's capable of producing acid just like strep mutans is. It's also aciduric which means it can live in the acidic conditions that it creates. So People have researched a possible vaccine to stop dental caries, and they're honestly still being researched now. Animal experimental studies are apparently successful, but there's no, been no luck on human clinical trials so far. Um, the problem here is that there's so many different bacteria that cause caries. These are just two of the many species involved in the long, long process. And so it's very difficult to vaccinate against them all. There's also a lack of economic incentive, unfortunately. Um, people have also experimented with probiotic rinse and other probiotic products. Much like when we consume yogurt with probiotics or use a probiotic supplement, that's like when we supply our intestines with good friendly bacteria that occupy uh, the, the niches so that bad bacteria can't reside there. 
Now, M18 is a specific strain of Streptococcus salivarius, one of the friendly bacteria in our mouths, and it works by releasing a bacteriocin-like inhibitory substance, or bliss, and these are proteins that in inhibit the growth of Streptococcus mutans, Streptococcus sobrinus, and other bad bacteria responsible for the development of plaque. And this oral probiotic, or oral biotic, comes in toothpaste and tablets, and it has very little evidence-based research so far, but it seems to help somewhat in the battle against tooth decay, and perhaps also bad breath and sore th and even strep throat. So who knew? Pretty cool. But even if we were to control bacteria, it's such a dynamic system, it's virtually impossible to eliminate all the cariogenic bacteria from the mouth. So now, how about sugar? Is all sugar bad for cavities? Well, only some sugars are considered fermentable, and within that group, some sugars can be fermented more easily than others. For example, monosaccharides or simple sugars can easily enter the intracellular metabolism pathway known as glycolysis and then be converted into lactic acid by fermentation. And um, this is just a side note, but lactic acid fermentation is sometimes technically referring to the entire step from sugar to acid, and other times just the second step. Here, let me show you um, this, this quick diagram here. It's kind of useful. Um, we start with a glucose, and with glycolysis, we get to two pyruvates, or two pyruvic acids, which in turn makes two lactic acids. So glycolysis being the first step, fermentation being the second step, and like I said, lactic acid fermentation can sometimes refer to this entire process, depending on you know the source that you're, you're reading. Um, before I go more into um, the fermentable carbohydrates, I'm going to stop the video here before it gets too long, um, but we're going to pick up right where we left off and just continue talking about specific uh, carbohydrates. So I'll see you guys in the next video.